It's your girl DJ Miss Eclectic Wiki Wiki and you're checking out the Mixtape Podcast. It's your girl DJ Miss Eclectic and you're tuned into the Mixtape. I have a very special guest this evening all the way from New York. I can't, I can't sing. I don't even know why I tried that. Yeah, I have none other than JL Ricks. How are you doing this evening? Oh, praise God. I'm doing great. Thank God. How's things going over there? Hey man, it's good. And we were just talking about it's pollinated. It's a whole lot of pollen going on in, <laughs> in Atlanta. So oh, I'm just trying to goodness. figure out allergies and all that. So yeah, but absolutely doing well. How are y'all doing in New York? Are y'all starting to open up? I know y'all one of the first major states to really, really shut down. So are y'all opening back up yet? Oh my goodness. It seemed like forever. It's taking forever, but they started at 35%. Now they're at 50%. So anything is better than that total shutdown. I tell you. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, New York, the city that never sleeps, uh, the lights are bright. You never know if it's 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. or 4 p.m. So I know that was very different for you all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was a total difference. Like you said, we used to being out anytime, all times. And now we had to all shut in. So that was an experience. Absolutely. I'm praying that we're coming out of this, though. I'm saying, all right, Lord, we're we coming out of this. I'm ready to travel again, personally. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm absolutely Amen. ready to come out of this. <laughs> Amen. I think we're all about ready. Right? We got to wait on him. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Absolutely. It's his time and definitely not ours. So I'm like, all right, Lord, I'm mm-hmm. just I'm just sitting here waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so, and man. That's we... the strange thing about it. It's still out there, though. No, it's the thing is it's not going yep. anywhere, even yep, though. Yep, even though the vaccine is here, I know there are different strands of it going around. So it's definitely still here in the flesh. I think that's what people need to remember. I say, y'all, it's still mm-hmm. here. I'm, I got on a flight the other day. I hadn't flew in a long time. And I was like, oh, Lord, I don't know if I was mm-hmm. ready for this. <laughs> so it's... <laughs> well, thank God. You, you, you know, something was interesting that when my song came out, it came out in the midst of the pandemic. And what was crazy about it is that it started really lifting people's spirits up. So I was like, First, I was I was panicking. I was saying, Lord, what you doing? Can't you let me come out before this? Right. <laughs> but it came out at a time where it turned out to be an inspirational to a lot of folks. That's the thing about all the music that came out during the pandemic. We actually needed that music. You needed something to lift you up. It was, times are so uncertain, which they still are uncertain, but especially in the midst of the oh. pandemic, where well, we didn't know if we walked outside, do you get it? Do I breathe on you? We didn't mm. know how you got the virus. So... All every song, especially you said my your song is my song. My soul longs for you. Absolutely, during the pandemic, my soul is going to yearn for Jesus. I need to know, <laughs> Lord, well, what's that, going that, on? That was something to remind us too. Yep. Right? Absolutely, <laughs> remind us I'm only got a soul. And we better be longing after the right one, Abs- Jesus. You better. <laughs> and if you don't know him, it's a good time to get to know him. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh man, so, so yes, we're definitely going to get into my soul longs for you. So you are a singer, songwriter, saxophonist. You started at 11 years old. Oh yes, that was really something the way the Lord brought me out because uh I had seen, believe it or not, I had seen James Brown and the JBs on TV. Oh and wow. Growing up in the 60s, you didn't see many uh black folks on television. And the thing that stood out was the way they twirled those saxophones and the way they did those steps. And so I always had a desire to play, but I never got a chance to until my brother's band, the saxophonist actually quit one day. Mm. And I decided to go down there and pick up the horn. And I'll tell you something, it's a miracle. I just started playing about not even one lesson. Wow. And it was crazy. I, I played all of the songs in the band. And my brother said, guess what? You the new horn player. <laughs> <laughs> like you got it you're naturally musically inclined yeah. wow yeah it was the grace of god i, I mean we look back hindsight of 2020 and i said wow it was the grace of god and the other unusual thing about it was the guy who was the horn player he hated playing the horn so the moment he saw me playing he said, that's your horn now you keep it <laughs> <laughs> you take it merry christmas like <laughs> yeah, i don't think we saw him again I, oh I okay okay <laughs> So it was meant to be at that point. You know, it really did seem like it by the grace of God. Hmm. He has a chart for our lives. And sometimes what we need to do is just take, say, Jesus, take the wheel. I mean, I didn't know him then, but I, I'm so grateful that he had a plan for my life, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you started 11 years and then 30 years later, you're still in the music industry. Well, you know, now that's another testimony because when I got saved in my late 20s, 
I gave my life to the Lord, and I realized that I had to give God my all. And mm-hmm. I never will forget, I was just sharing this testimony with the church the other day, and I was sitting in a church service, and I said, Lord, I don't have anything to give. I said, but I want to give you my best. And I said to the Lord in that service, I said, all I have is my music and my talent. I said, but God, I give it to you freely. You want to know something? Anytime we give God our best, he turns right back around and gives us his best. Absolutely. I mean, he gave us his best when he gave his son for us. Mm-hmm. But then he took my little gift, my little offering, and he poured out his anointing on my life. And a little while after that, I started pastoring and preaching, and the rest was history. So I've been, I've been actually in the church for the last 30 years, preaching and building the, God, the kingdom of God and pre- preaching the gospel. And it was funny because <laughs> all of a sudden, at the end of 30 years, the Lord waits till I get older, and he says, now I'm going to bless you with a song and a record deal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's all in his time. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, well, Lord, I said, can you do it when my knee didn't hurt so right. much? My leg? <laughs> it's arthritis <laughs> kicking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, God does have a sense of humor. I, oh, I tell people that all the time. He absolutely does. He has to. <laughs> so. But, you know, if you wait on him, and I tell folks, I say, you know, Southern, whenever you put God first, if you wait on him, he will make a way to give you your wildest dreams and never give up on your dream, never give up on, on your passion. Because the God we serve, he is just able to do it at a time that we least expect. Absolutely. Absolutely. I uh, I agree with that. That's a testimony right there that you have. And, and a lot of times it's so frustrating for people in the industry because it's people look from the outside. We look in and we see these artists and we think they just made it overnight. But we don't know uh, 10, 20 years they were just underground or they were just performing in their respective cities. We just didn't know them as a whole and they weren't that popular. But these people have been putting in works for years. So, you know, it's all about timing. Like somebody who might hear your record today might not know you were doing music 30 years ago. So you know that's mm-hmm. so that's you know that's amazing. We have to keep that in mind. It's all about God's timing, y'all. We're gonna go to a break right now. When I come back, I want to talk about a little bit more about being in the industry, what you experienced in the industry, and then it, that pivotal moment where you were like, okay, you know, you said wow. that God told you, but that pivotal moment, we were like, you know what? It's time to move. It's time to move in the ministry. Y'all keep it locked right here. It's the mixtape. Oh, it's your girl DJ Miss Eclectic, and you're tuning to the mixtape. If you're just now tuning in, I have none other than J L Ricks all the way in New York on the line with me. You still good? Doing good this evening? Yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. God is moving. Absolutely. We've been having some good conversations offline too, y'all. This has been good. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I want to talk about how was the experience through that thirty years in the music industry. I know you probably saw a lot of stuff in the industry, but did you tour? Did you travel? Work with different artists? What was the experience like? Well, you know, it was really fantastic because uh, at eleven years old, I played with my brother's band. Uh, for a few years, and when that band broke up, I think around I was around 16, 17, I joined another band, and we began to record and began to travel, and uh, it was very exciting, it was great, you know, and then uh, I had a little time off, I got a little serious with life around 1920, and I joined the Marine Corps for a little while, and by the time I came out the Marine Corps now, I had thought I had laid my music down, but, uh, it, you know, when God put something in your spirit, it was just there. And uh, I met my lovely wife now, um, Melissa, and we've been married now for 39 lovely years. Amen. By the grace of God. And it's been such a blessing raising our kids and pastoring the church and all that there. Uh, but like I was saying, you know, so when I came out the court and I got married, after a little while, I picked up my horn for a while. And I did a little bit, a little bit more of uh, recording and a little bit more singing. But then, you know, you had to make a choice, and the Lord was dealing with me so heavy. I said, well, you know what? I said, God, you know, I appreciate you giving me a chance to serve you like this. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm not going to let anything get in the way of me serving you. So I actually put the horn down, oh, wow. uh, like I said, for 30 years. And so I just full steam ahead, you know, uh, with the church and things like that. So uh, it's a real unusual testimony the way the Lord came in and gave me the music back. But like I said, the last time we were talking a few minutes ago, Anything that you give to God, I mean, he has a way of receiving it, uh, cleaning it up, uh, anointing it, and giving it back to us with a fresh perspective on it. And I mean, I don't know if we had time to get into it, but it was just a crazy way that (laughs) the Lord used a prophet to come to my church and prophesy Mm. uh, that somebody was going to get a miracle blessing in 24 hours. 
And, you know, as pastors, we're always thinking about the flock. So I'm standing there. I'm saying, oh, that's great. Bless blessed. Somebody's going to get blessed. It turned out that it was me because <laughs> wow. the next morning I get a call from Mel Holder, who's actually the producer uh, of my song. You know, Mel Holder's been in the business. and It's crazy, but, you know, he's been in the business for like 30 years. Yes, he has. We went yes. to the same high school. We went to Erasmus Hall High School. Wow. Which was a high school in Brooklyn, you know, for performing arts. And, uh, you know, we had lost track. We really didn't know each other back in high school. It's, it's, it's the way God does things. But like I said, he had, we had met. He had been coming to my church playing the horn and whatnot. It was one night I was up there singing and ministering to the Lord in a song. And so Malcolm comes out and he takes, he said, man, he said, man, I know you could, I know you could blow, blow the horn a little bit. He said, I heard you singing. He said, man, we can do something. So you know how you take things with a grain of salt. I'm like, yeah, you know, all right. But the next day, it turns out that the miracle was me, DJ. And he called me. He said, man, he said, we got to get you in the studio, brother. I said, well, are you serious? He said, man, come down to the studio. Oh, wow. And so 24 hours later, the prophecy came to pass. 24 hours. Wow. wow. And it was you. Does that mean God gets me to do something for somebody that's listening to you tonight in 24 hours? Somebody better hold on. Come on now. Come on. You know, you, you know, it's, you know it's a faith walk. You know, everything that we do, we do by faith. Absolutely. A lot of times we are saying things and we don't realize that the Lord is in what we're saying. So I think the Lord is speaking through this testimony, DJ Clemson, to somebody in your audience tonight. So somebody need to perk up. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> He that has an ear, <laughs> let him hear. Yeah, come on now, speak it. Come on, you better preach. <laughs> we'll turn this into a whole yeah, preaching you, platform. Well, I'm not trying to do that, but I'm just saying, you know what happens is that what God does for one, he'll do for another. Absolutely. And another unusual thing is we think that sometimes in our natural wisdom that we're too old to do certain things. You know, like, Lord, I'm older now, you know, so it ain't no time for me to do no singing and no touring and no recording. Mm -hmm. But the way God works, I'm telling you, he called Moses when Moses was 80 years old. Right. So whoever's listening, it does, your age is nothing but a number to God. I mean, if you really have something in your heart that you wanted to do, and if you put God first and you put that thing on the back burner, DJ, I'm telling you, God has a way of bringing it back to you. And when this thing broke out, it just has been an amazing ride. And I have to give God all the glory and honor and praise uh, for it. I just have to give God the praise. Hey man, that's definitely a testimony for people. Somebody like me, who's I've been in the industry for a while. We were talking about that for even somebody else who's mm -hmm. put their instrument down. Who's think, okay, you know, I've been singing in the church all this time. You know, I think I'm too old. I'm a senior saint. I'm too old to put out an album. You, it's still people that you can touch. There's still an audience for you. And if it's God's time and it's God's oh time. And so I think that is definitely an amazing testimony that can definitely touch somebody. Cause you know, we're, uh, we're in a comparison um, era where we see somebody, on Instagram we see somebody mm. on Facebook and we see them doing well and they may be younger than us even for me it may be a younger younger person and I'm thinking oh man you know mm -hmm. they're young and they're already you know elevated in their life and look at me but it's all about God's timing <laughs> and so I'm and that's that's I, I that, that. That's, that touched me I'm for real <laughs> what you said absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. because he God knows like I tell the saints all the time God knows what we know not mm. and that he knows what we can bear and he made that promise, I would not put more on you than you can bear. So I guess the time, like you said, was once the church was established. I mean, come on, after 30 years. <laughs> yeah, right. He said, all right, you're good. You've done the groundwork. Yep. My kids was all grown up. Yes. I guess the Lord said, now, boy, I'm going to give you something that you want to do. Yes. <laughs> like you're ready. Because you know, you've, you've done his work. Never too late. Absolutely. You, <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. the thing I think. And I, and I love that too, is you put God's work before your own. And I think we, I think we're so caught up in ourselves a lot that we forget to ask, okay, God, mm -hmm. what is my gift for you? What do you have me on this earth? I know what I desire, but what do you desire for me? You know, how can I do what you put me on this earth to do to bring people to you? And so I think your testimony is mm -hmm. like all in one. And so, you know, you do God's work mm -hmm. for you and he will bless you. And definitely, indeed, and in time. So I love it. I love it. And now we are sitting here with the new single, My Soul Longs for You. Let's talk about this single. It's upbeat. Mm, okay. It's jazzy. I was like, oh, it's like an upbeat, jazzy anthem. <laughs> I, I like it. <laughs> so how did y'all go in and write oh, the so song? Glad to hear that. Yes. Well, you know what's unusual about this is like uh, I had wrote this song years ago. And so when I went to the studio that morning, uh, I had Mel listen to a few things I had written, and so Mel, being a jazz man all these years, he said, "Listen, we gotta we gotta refresh this a little bit. We gotta bring it up to the twenty 
2020, 2019 era. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. that's exactly what he did. He's a fantastic producer uh, as a musician and everything, but he just put that spin on it. And uh, I came back and began to sing it. And uh, we just was enjoying uh, ministering unto the Lord, and the rest is history. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's definitely going to, and I think it's definitely an audience for this too. Sometimes. You know, if you want to hear a jazz song, but you want to hear, you know, you don't want mm-hmm. to hear a secular jazz song, but you have something like this that can, that's music to your ears, but you're also praising God at the same time. So there's definitely an audience for this song. What do you want your audience to feel when they're playing My Soul Longs for You? Well, you know, uh, I really believe that God gave me that song when I was working for Corporate America, like I said, many years ago. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of those church services that we had that, you know, just carried over from Sunday to Monday. And I never will forget, I came to my office that morning, and, you know, we had a powerful time in the Lord on that Sunday. And I got to my office, and I said, listen, did everybody get out of my office for a minute. <laughs> and I closed the door, and I just had a longing for the Lord. Oh, wow. You know, but I was at work, so I was like, you know, you know, these people are going to think I'm crazy if I start crying out. But I just took a few minutes to give God praise, and that's where the song was birthed. And like that scripture that says, as a deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for you. Mm. That was the premise and the foundation of this song. My God. And on that note, y'all, we're about to get into this amazing, fantastic, upbeat, jazzy single. All my senior saints, all my young saints, it's going to touch everybody. Y'all, we are about to introduce My Soul Longs for You by J.L. Ricks. Y'all keep it locked right here. <laughs> If you're just now tuning in, I have none other than J.L. Ricks on the line all the way in New York. And you just heard his new single, My Soul Longs for You. So, um, Matt, tell everybody where to go get your new single, My Soul Longs for You. Wow, praise God. I'm still just enjoy- enjoying this ride, this way the Lord has a song with this song. But, I mean, it's been great. I mean, you can you can get the song on all digital outlets and actually, you can look at the video. We did a video for the song on YouTube. So if you put in My lo- my Soul Longs After You on YouTube, it'll pop up. You can go to uh, Spotify and hear it. The Spotify numbers are coming up. Okay. And uh, Pandora and, and Amazon Music and, uh, oh, oh, my goodness, all digital outlets. If you, if, you, if you lock that in at My Soul Longs After You, J.L. Ricks, it will pop up. And I'll be so glad for you to tune in and, and, and support the song. God bless you. Everyone who, who's been supporting us, it's just been so wonderful. And, and we just give God all the glory. Hey Amen. I'm just so glad that, you know, you're getting this amazing feedback and the fact that you're doing this after so many years and God has just continued to bless you in ministry, even though it's song ministry now that I think it's amazing. So is that you singing and playing on the album, on the song, on the uh, record? Well, you know something, I, I, I probably could play, <laughs> but I think the song got so good to Mel that he whipped out his uh, his flute, and you hear him, Mel Holmes, playing the flute, and uh, because he was a producer, he actually began to put some musicians in the studio, and okay. he got a wonderful background singer of Monica Day, she has an awesome voice, and she's singing the background there, and uh, I'm singing the lead and everything like that, so uh, it came out pretty good, but you know, I do play several other instruments, and and, and it's kind of like Mel told me in the studio. He said, man, he said, Rick, so he said, all we got to do is just dust off this gift. He said, God gave you this gift, man. And you know something, uh, DJ, it felt so good when I did actually get back in the studio and I started picking back up the piano and, and playing some guitar licks and things of that nature. All of it just started downloading back to my spirit. God is just awesome. He absolutely is. God is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. As we've been saying, it's all about his timing. So, okay. So, I mean, you're just multifaceted church for over 30 years, <laughs> church in New York and a church in Florida. God is just blessing you on blessings on blessings on blessings. <laughs> so, I absolutely love it. I absolutely I, love I, it. I, 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 I tell you something, I don't really cut you off, but I tell no, you, uh, with this song coming out, what was amazing also was that the distributor mentioned to me that I need to bring the song out on my own label. Now, are you ready for this? So I said, my own label. I mm. said, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> so we came out with my song longs after you, right? On my own label, wow. Burning Bush Enterprises. Wow. So now I got Burning Bush Enterprises. I, I We produced my, my oldest son, who's a gospel rapper like you. Uh, and he's got a song out, Goliath Killer, and he is really killing it. My youngest son did the beats and did the music on his song. 
And Lawrence is he he does uh, television music. He does television production. And then I we were able to bring my youngest daughter's song out. Uh, Aikita, she goes by Aikita, and we were able to get her song on Burning Bush, and her song is entitled I'm So Blessed. And I'm just sitting back in amazement. My wife and I, we're going like, you know, whenever you pray that prayer, Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> you better be ready because you right? can take it. And so all of a sudden, we got a single out. We got two artists under our label and uh, talking to a few other people about coming on our label. It's just an amazing ride with the Lord and just walking with the Lord. There's no comparison. I mean, you go up, you may go down, but the beauty of it is what God promises, he always brings to pass. So I want someone to be encouraged that it's never too late for God to take the wheel in your life. Just be willing to humble out and he'll do it for you, just like he's doing it for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's how we go. I'm, that's the ending right there. You absolutely. I love it. Well, you're a preacher. So you're a preacher. So it makes all the sense in the world. But you're definitely dropping gems on this evening. Before I let you go, I have to ask, since you've got this major jazz mm-hmm. influence, who are some of your major jazz influences that you've worked with or that you just listen to? Well, I'll tell you something. That is an excellent question, because uh, uh, recently, like last year, uh, through Mel Holder, I was able to meet the one and only Ben Tankard. Oh, yes. And we had Ben Tankard come to the church, and we sponsored a gospel jazz night, oh, a nice. free gospel jazz night. And everybody on Staten Island, everybody from Brooklyn, everybody from all over the city was coming to the church to hear this anointed vessel, Ben Tankard. And he came in and he ministered. Mel Holder took out his saxophone. He ministered. I got up there and tried to do a little singing and whatnot, and, and God was just being glorified. So Ben Taggart is definitely on the list. Oh, he's amazing. Oh, he's he's one of the best to do it, yeah. especially in the gospel industry. So absolutely, yeah. that's a, that's the influence to yeah. have. We might see a uh, <laughs> we might see a collab coming up soon. Then on on your own label on Burning <laughs> Bush. I don't know. <laughs> that that would be awesome. Prophesy now. I receive. I receive all. Come that. on now. <laughs> Yes, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I love it. I've absolutely enjoyed you on the show. Thank you for telling us about your testimony. Thank you, so Thank you for speaking us. these Thank words you. into the atmosphere and on this show. And I pray that these listeners are blessed as well as blessed as I have been this afternoon and this evening. So tell everybody how to support you. Where do we follow you on all social media outlets? All right. You know, I'm still getting used to this social media now. When I started back in the day, <laughs> you know, we had cassette tapes. Yep. I'm not <laughs> mad. Now, I'm Put that on, pencil uh, in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm on Facebook as Bishop Joseph L. Ricks. I'm on uh, Instagram, Dr. J. L. Ricks. And like I said, I have a YouTube channel that's up. Amen. And that's J. L. Ricks. If you go to YouTube. And I'm, I'd love to hear from you. My email is, is kind of also... You know, I'm bringing it up to par, bringing it up to speed, but it's daystar707 at AOL.com. And you guys can hit me up with an email or inbox me on, or, on Instagram or Facebook. And I just love to hear from you, any comments. And we've been getting so many great comments. I mean, we're up to about 50 uh, some thousand of views of the video oh, that's on awesome. uh, YouTube. That is amazing. And, and that's been a tremendous blessing. That's awesome. And thank God for Round the Clock Entertainment. With, yeah, you know, our brother Carlton McConnell. Carlton. Shout out to Carlton because he does it right, man. Yes, and I'm so does. glad that Mel hooked me up with him. And, and, and God has just been doing something awesome. And I give him all the glory, honor, and praise. But that's pretty much how you can get a hold of me for now. All right. Stay tuned yeah. for Burning Bush. We got some more stuff coming out. All right. We're looking forward to Burning Bush and more projects that you will have out. I'm sure an album is coming out soon. We hope that's coming out after the single. So y'all just type in Bishop J.L. Ricks, Dr. J.L. Ricks. He's going to come up. Make sure you support this movement. Make sure you support his music. And I hope you have a blessed evening. Thank you for dropping by the mixtape. DJ Miss Eclectic. So epic. Wiki Wiki, the mixtape podcast with your girl DJ Miss Eclectic.